the, the, the job of the investment promotion agency um, has been quite understated in the past. Uh, but before you can actually grow your economy, you also require a lot of investment. No economy has been able to stand on its own or developed on its own. It's always facilitated and required investments both internally and externally. And for us, the new African narration that we want to, want to um, leave behind or to facilitate today is to ensure that the African opportunity is optimized for wealth creation on the continent and ensuring that Africa takes its rightful place as a very credible trading partner globally. Africa is well endowed with almost all the natural resources required for the world to reboot and go back to pre-COVID um, levels of economic growth. But yet, um, we, our share of global investment, or FDI, is only 5.2%, about 83 billion. If you take Latin America um, last year, it was $620 billion. If you take Asia, it was over $140 billion. So why is that Africa, with all the raw materials, all the resources, and potentially the largest potential market, has only 52 of global FDI? And I believe the answer lies in Africa on the back of AFCFTA coming together first to recognize that we can build a dynamic and wealth-creating economy um, if we work together. And that is what AFCFTA is about. But beyond AFCFTA, or inclusive of AFTA's mandate, is the view that we need to facilitate and bring together um, the investment promotion agencies to make their continent attractive or to make it easy to invest on the continent, both for intracontinental investment and foreign direct investment coming from outside, but which we, use, we need to use to optimize uh, opportunities and grow the continent. And the continent remains extremely attractive. There is all indication that foreign direct investment in Africa yields higher, um, higher than in most other regions. Um, and the perceptions of risk in Africa um, are sometimes overly stated against the opportunity and the potential. And so, and, and so we, the IPAs, have decided to come together to go through what we believe should be the questions that we need to ask ourselves and to ensure that we play a very critical role in ensuring that AFCFT becomes a reality. I'm, I'm, are you not hamstrung by the current challenges in the economy? And I'll first like to what you, you've been um, talking about. You know, you know, I mean, if you are a student of economics and, and, and global dynamics, many regions in the world have gone through um, all sorts of changes. They've had problems. They've had issues. Um, this is not the first time an economy has issues. And we are all very clear on how we've gotten to where we are. Um, we should never underestimate the impact of the pandemic and, of course, the Russia-Ukraine um, war. Um, today, the U.S. has reached its highest borrowing limits. Um, it's never done that in a while. Um, we see U.K. also having stresses. We've seen Germany having stresses in the economy. It's, it's a global problem that we have. And um, there is a view also that to resolve today's issues that are happening um, and the disruption in the global economy, which the IMF and the World Bank have stated that is going to shrink in the next few years. They've said that global uh, growth is going to slow down significantly and poverty is going to increase significantly. Um, there's going to be a potentially a uh, food crisis globally. These are issues that are real and not necessarily um, subject to any particular zone or region. They are global. So we need to come together to work to see how we can formulate a solution. But for us in Africa, we think the opportunity is real. We think it's, it's looming right in front of us. And we need to take advantage. To take advantage of that, we need to facilitate intracontinental investment to bring about intracontinental trade. So notwithstanding what the, the, the problems are today, those problems will be resolved. The world will go on and it has to recover just like it has recovered many times after crisis. But currently, though, Ghana specifically, our private sector doesn't have what it takes to even, uh, not necessarily compete, but even collaborate. Because the private sector, thanks to our debt restructuring, have all their money held up somewhere. And today we are going to go do debt swap and what have you. What does the private sector have now to, to leverage the, the support that we're going to get if well, I mean, the, the idea of an investment promotion agency is to work with private sector. Opportunities do just not exist in one instance. They exist in every, many places. There is opportunity. There is opportunity for us to add value to our raw materials and resources and then leverage on the higher ends of the value chain. 
Those exist. If you are going to sit and, and dwell on all the problems you have, and everybody has problems. Almost, I mean, I, I, I would be surprised that there aren't quarters in the world today that do not have problems. But the issue is not to cry on the problems, but to resolve those problems and move ahead beyond the problems into real opportunity. I, I dare say that our private sector is ready. And what they really need is redirection into where the opportunities are. And they will elevate themselves and, and, and be a credible partner to economic growth. The president has always clearly stated that the, the, uh, the private sector is a partner that you can't do without in any economic growth situation. Is there any practical policy to direct that? Oh, of course there is. There is. There are absolutely clear policies of engagement of the private sector. Recently, the president undertook a, a trip to uh, Abu Dhabi. He went along with over 20 private sector people to engage with um, 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 potential investors in the um, GCC region, yeah. not just um, Emiratis, but in the GCC region. I am told that it was extremely productive, and they were very grateful and very happy that and believe that more of such things should happen. Thank you.